at 47 years old, I get asked a lot, Dr. Kappel, what lasers do you do on yourself? So I'm not gatekeeping these lasers and energy-based devices that I do to keep my skin healthy and to keep my skin envelope optimal with optimal skin health from different laser treatments, targeting different aspects of aging and different changes in my skin, as well as lasers that I've done even earlier in my 20s and 30s that I see now in my late 40s, definitely paying off. So this video, I'm gonna go into all my laser treatments that I do on myself, as well as energy-based device treatments that I do on myself, ones that I recommend for my patients and for you guys. And then also, I'm just kind of taking a little deeper dive into what each laser and device does and why I think it's really, really helpful for long-term overall skin health. Now, I've kind of had it in the back of my mind when I turn 50 years old, I probably will undergo surgery, probably like a lower face and neck lift because as much as lasers can help the skin envelope, we can increase collagen stores, we can make the epidermis and the dermis as healthy as it possibly can be histologically. Lasers cannot penetrate the deeper structures. It can't restore bone resorption. It can't restore muscle laxity and laxity of the smaz or the ligaments and tendons that hold up our face. And honestly, now that I'm like 47, I'm starting to see a little bit of sagginess is probably not gonna be resolved with a thermage or a CO2 or an erbium or a fraxel. But up to this point, I've been able to get away with just energy-based devices and lasers up to this point. Now, I've done thermage four times in my life. I started on my 30th birthday and I did it at age 30, 35, 40, and 45. I usually do it around my birthday. And then when I turn 50, I'll probably just go in under the knife and have a full on face and neck lift, depending on what I look like at that time. And I'll take you guys on that journey with me. I haven't reached menopause yet. And I'm sure that after that happens, you know, I may need a little help and may have to be taken into the OR. But as far as my life up to this point, you know, I've been able to rely on energy-based devices and lasers, and I've been interested in it my entire life and had exposure to it since my early 20s, just being a dermatologist, you know, that I've had early access to treatments. And when I was younger, I was more or less doing treatments on myself and my co-residents were doing treatments on me and we were doing it on each other just to kind of practice, but we were inadvertently giving each other prejuvenation treatments and anti-aging treatments early in our 20s, which are now paying off in, you know, our 40s. So it's actually kind of cool to see. But one most, the one of the most important lasers that I do do at least once a year is a Fraxel. I actually do it twice a year. So every six months and I do my face, my neck and my chest. And Fraxel Dual, also known as Fraxel Restore, has two different wavelengths. The 1550 nanometer wavelength is for texture, pore size, collagen stimulation, for smoothing out fine lines and wrinkles. It's great for the under eye area. And the 1927 handpiece um, targets more pigment, melanin, um, melasma, cloasma, solar lentigines, or brown spots. I struggled with melasma early on. Um, I've been on the birth control pill my whole life and really struggled with melasma from it. And so the 1927 nanometer handpiece on the Fraxel really kind of helped my melasma keep that at bay. In addition to sunscreen and vitamin C and some um, brightening you know, serums and actives in my skincare regimen. So my vitamin CFK actually keeps my MD or vitamin CFK keeps my melasma at bay right now. But of course I do lasers usually twice a year to help with that. So Fraxel is one of my favorite lasers. I recommend it for many of my patients. In darker skin tones, we have to change the settings and do the pre and post skin conditioning regimen a little bit different, but that's what a whole laser fellowship is, is for, is treating skin of color safely, different skin types, different skin thicknesses, different skin um, Fitzpatrick types, and knowing what lasers, what settings, what lasers to combine, pre and post care that really like you spend a really solid year under the tutelage of a world-renowned expert logging in thousands and thousands and thousands of cases in your ACGME login. And in English, what that means for my non-physician friends out there is that you're under scrutiny with a laser specialist really eyeing your work and kind of behind your back, guiding you through different treatments with different types of individuals with you know different settings and endpoints. For me, I do a Fraxel twice a year. I try to space it so I'm doing it every six months and I do it to keep my pore size small. I do it for collagen stimulation and I do it for help smoothing out fine lines and wrinkles and preventing fine lines and wrinkles. And also I just want to take this moment to say that there's a well-powered, amazing study that was done at Mass General Harvard Medical School. It was actually headed by one of my biggest inspirations, Dr. Matt Avram from Mass General Wellman Labs at Harvard. And it was a study that showed that fractionated laser resurfacing, such as Fraxel Dual or Fraxel Restore is another name for it, can actually decrease skin cancer and precancers, which we call in dermatology actinic keratosis, 
by 50%. So that makes sense because healthy skin is cancer free. All of those environmental insults like UV damage, blue light damage, environmental toxins and pollutants, all those things that cause skin cancer also cause you know accelerated premature aging like fine lines, wrinkles, loss of collagen, stretched out pores, um, brown spots, sunspots, things like that. So if you're going to reverse those changes to make the skin look better, you're also going to decrease your risk of precancers and skin cancer incidence. So I definitely recommend a Fraxel um, Restore um, for most of my patients and I do it every six months. Now I started doing Fraxel in my early 20s, but I used to just do it just underneath my eyes to keep the collagen stores up because I remember being in the lecture hall as a medical student and hearing the lecture. We had like a dermatology little series within our lecture, our didactic lectures. And I remember the dermatologist talking about how the under eye is the thinnest area of skin of our, in our face and can be the first to show our age. And so you want to do things to increase collagen stores there more than any other area of the face. Now I would say it's probably under eyes and like neck and chest and the back of the hands too. But those are areas that are thinner and when there's a loss of collagen and elastin in that skin, it shows faster than any other area in our face. So I used to go, I remember taking the key to the Beckman Laser Institute in the laser lab and was like fraxling under my eyes because I never wanted, I wanted to be like proactive. And this was when I was in my early 20s before like anti-aging and prejuvenation was even a thing. I've been obsessed with skin like my whole life. I knew I wanted to be a dermatologist when I was only like eight years old. But um, that's something that I did earlier on. And then I would say probably once a year, I would fraxel under my eyes just once throughout like my 20s and 30s. And then now every time I do a fraxel on my full face, I do a fraxel under my eyes as well. But in addition to that, I do a CO2 under my eyes at least once a year. So that's another treatment that I make sure I do once a year. In addition to a fraxel, twice a year, I do a CO2 under my eyes once a year. Um, depending on your age and the degree of laxity and fine lines and wrinkles under your eyes, you know, that may be once every five years or once every three years. For me, I feel like once a year um, at my age is keeping my under eyes um, nice and tight. Now, I've also done thermage under my eyes and I've done it, like I said, four times in my life at 35, 30, 35, 40, and 45. And I do it usually lower face thermage to collagen bank and increase collagen stores, but also for the under eye area. And so I've done thermage um, four times in my life under my eyes. Um, I actually haven't done my upper eyelids, but I have had an upper eyelid blepharoplasty back in 2000 when I was 41, um, around, I think it was like around 2020. And um, I took you guys on that journey with me, just as I'll take you on my future journeys with me. When, if I do have a neck and facelift at some point, I'll take you guys on that journey with me on how do I find my surgeon and all of the things. But I never did a, a thermage on my upper eyelids because I had the upper lid blepharoplasty, but I feel like a lower lid thermage every five years has kept my under eyes um, looking pretty good so far. I don't have any filler or anything under, under my eyes. And so we've talked about Fraxel, we've talked about CO2 under eyes. I, I don't usually do a CO2 full face um, that often or an Erbium. Um, I usually just do it under my eyes because I rely more on like a Fraxel at this point in my life. Um, but CO2 full face is really good for people who have a lot of sun damage or, um, you know, really want to reverse acne scars or deep, deeper etched in fine lines and wrinkles. It just like kind of is a step above um, Fraxel Restore, which is not ablative because it is an ablative laser and a CO2 and Erbium are both ablative lasers. Ablative means it takes the skin out, it vaporizes it, it just doesn't heat it up. And then another laser that I usually do once a year is V-beam. So V just stands for vascular. It's a laser that takes the red out. I do struggle with rosacea a little bit, especially like in my mid face right here. I get little broken telangiectasias and capillaries around my nose and sometimes I'll get like random ones on my chin. Um, also V-beam is great for under eye dark circles. Now I don't do that one regularly, but back several years ago, Steph, if you're watching this, um, Steph, Stephanie's my amazing laser nurse specialist who has been treating me for over 10 years at what, when I was in my fellowship laser training we trained together and she actually did my under eyes with v-beams because I used to have dark circles under my eyes and I did a series of three spaced one month apart so when I do a v-beam once a year over my full face I you know I kind of concentrate more in like the areas where I have like little broken capillaries and telangiectasias and I always kind of refresh my under eyes so that my dark circles don't come back but I don't have to wear concealer or makeup under my eyes to hide that discoloration because ever since doing V-beam, it's really, I'm taking those dark circles away. But I do do a V-beam full face once a year just for like redness. And I, there's two hand pieces you can use on that laser. One that actually targets visible vessels in dermatology, which we call telangiectasias. And then there's one for kind of like overall diffuse redness. And I get really swollen from V-beam. So if any of my patients, you guys have witnessed me coming into the office, seeing you guys and treating patients after I myself had a V-beam, I get really swollen. But I also respond really well to that. So being swollen from lasers or procedures, not necessarily a bad thing because the swelling 
happening is because cellular mediators are talking to one another, a signal transduction cascades are going on and the cells are, you know, kind of stimulating each other to make collagen and to, for cellular renewal and to make elastin and to restore the barrier and all these things that we want the skin to do, but in doing so, sometimes you get a little swollen and that's okay. So I usually don't usually take like a metal dose pack or like an Advil because I want the swelling to happen. And if it gets too much, then I will, but it's something, you know, it's like something that means that, you know, it's like being sore from the gym. You're like, well, I don't want to get sore. Well, yeah, you do. Cause that means changes are happening. So I get really swollen from BB, but I also respond very well to it. So we talked about Thermage, we talked about Fraxel, um, we talked about V-Beam, CO2. Another one that I want to talk about is Clear and Brilliant. So Clear and Brilliant is a fractionated laser that's also non-ablative. It's kind of like a baby Fraxel Restore. It has two wavelengths. It's a 1440, not a 1550 nanometer handpiece, but also a 1927 nanometer handpiece. And the 1440 is a little bit spicier, but usually um, people are very comfortable with Clear and Brilliant with numbing cream, especially since we're a medical office with physicians. Um, we use a higher grade medical uh, grade numbing cream, which makes VBeam very, I mean, Clear and Brilliant very comfortable. I'm tired, guys. You can tell I just put my two kids to bed and it's the week of Halloween. That's why my I'm, I have these two ponytails because my my daughter, my 10 year old, did my hair because I'm going to be Dorothy from uh, Wizard of Oz and I just was trying on my costume. So, part of my pigtails and my tiredness, but just raising two kids and all their activities and making dinner, cleaning up after dinner. I got them to bed. Now I'm doing the YouTube video, but I'm a little tired. So, sorry, I'm low energy. Oh, so um, Clear and Brilliant is great because if it's there's no pain no downtime and you can kind of just go right back to work or right back to your daily activities without much downtime um, usually I do a clear and brilliant if I see my melasma kind of creeping in um, my son's a competitive surfer sometimes I'll be on the beach for like 10 straight hours at his surf competitions not 10 straight hours probably like, yeah, eight to ten hours if you know you're from the morning until you know, wake up at five in the morning you're on the beach all day until you know if he does really well he advances to the next heat and it's usually you know two or three in the afternoon when he finishes you I'll usually start to have my melasma kind of creep in usually on my forehead unfortunately like on my upper lip and usually like on my cheeks right here and on my neck so I do clear and brilliant when I have my melasma kind of creeping in and I'll usually do three treatments based one month apart and that just kills it also I'll do a clear and brilliant if I want like a little glow up before an event or before um, my family goes on vacation or you know if there's something I just need a little glow up for I'll do clear and brilliant but it's not like you know I'll, I would say I do probably like maybe three to six clear and brilliant a year but that can change with the year Another laser that I have in my office that I don't do too much on myself, but I used to do is Pico laser. So Pico is really good for really stubborn melasma or brown spots. Um, I do Pico toning and I usually do that on my neck for melasma and just for anti-aging. And it's a great in-office procedure with no downtime, not very painful. You don't even need numbing cream. And if you guys have followed me on Instagram, I usually will post with Stephanie, my amazing laser nurse specialist is doing um, Pico toning on my neck. But again, I do Fraxel on my neck as well. And that helps with um, melasma and pigment. But Pico is really great for darker skin tones and Fitzpatrick 3, 4, 5, and 6, um, my darker um, skin beauties who need melasma or pigmentation treatment um, that's safe and effective. It's a Pico laser, which means it's very fast. It fires at a Pico of, of a second, with a, which is a trillionth of a second, which means it's so fast there's no dissipation of heat. It's a photoacoustic, not a photothermal reaction. I hear myself getting scientific. So in English, what that means, there's no generation of heat that's going to cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or darkening after the laser. It just kind of cleans out the melanin, shatters it, your immune system comes and cleans it up and you know your skin um, kind of like flakes and peels off and the area is treated after one week of downtime and it's really great for my darker skin to all the skinned um, beauties out there. So I have done Pico on myself but it's not in my personal rotation once a year like you know my other workhorses that I've mentioned. So those are the lasers that I do now at age 47 to keep my skin looking its best and we'll see how much longer I can hang in there. I probably am close to the point where in the next upcoming five years, I'm going to need surgery because you can only do so much to keep the skin envelopes nice and tight and full of collagen. But when the bone starts getting resorbed, when muscles, tendons, and ligaments start falling, lasers and energy-based devices can only do so much. They are very important though, even if you have surgery. We always joke around, you know, my plastic surgeon colleagues and I, or most dermatologists and plastics, when we get together for meetings, we'll say it's like having new furniture with old upholstery on it. You know, you're going to want a beautiful skin envelope on top of surgery. You don't want to have surgery with like crappy skin or weather beaten skin like if you have a full-on face and neck lift but you have brown spots and you have like you know wrinkly fine skin that lacks collagen 
it's kind of like a disconnect. And when the eyes scan the face, the brain perceives things as just like looking weird. So it's really important to always maintain skin health, regardless of your age, regardless if you have had surgery or you're not having surgery or you're somewhere in between, it's really, really um, important. And even after you've had surgery or a face and neck lift, you want to keep up your skin, you know, health. And you see plastic surgeons talking about this all the time. Half the plastic surgeons out there are trying to be dermatologists because they realize how important the skin envelope is. Because after the surgery, you know, if your skin laying on top of that surgery is old and weathered and weather beaten, it's not going to look good. So always maintain your skin optimal health. And most of my patients I see day in and day out, whether they're 20 or whether they're 80, have beautiful skin because they do take care of themselves and wear sunscreen and use actives and come in for laser treatments. And um, that's why I'm such a huge proponent of it. And that's why I'm so passionate about skin health and um, optimizing the skin envelope. So again, those are the laser treatments that I usually do on an annual basis um, in my late 40s. Um, but earlier on, I want to say that a Fraxel under my eyes, um, V-beam every once in a while. I did a lot of clear and brilliance when I was younger. And again, I did Thermage to Collagen Bank earlier on, which I feel now is paying off. And now that I'm older, honestly, like my kids are so busy, you know, I have my skincare line and my medical practice where I'm seeing patients. I don't have as much time to take care of myself and do these procedures on myself as much as I did when I was younger and I didn't have kids and I didn't have a practice and I didn't have all of the, you know, the balancing act of life. And I think though that now that I'm older, I don't do as much, but I'm kind of riding on the coattails of procedures I did earlier on in my twenties and thirties. So just being transparent, you know, although I don't do as much now that I'm older, well, after hearing myself talk about all the lasers I do, maybe that is kind of a lot. But um, I don't really do many fillers. I do do Botox. I use Daxify last six months on me, so I do that twice a year. I only do about 40 units because I almost kind of train myself not to move anymore because I've been doing Botox since you know, I was in my early 20s in residency when you know we were kind of just practicing on each other. And I feel that now I rely more heavily on lasers and tightening devices and skincare actives more than like fillers. And of course, I still do my neuromodulators, but fillers are something that I used to do a lot of like in my 20s and 30s because it was fun. We're injecting ourselves, we're practicing. You, know, you hear all these lectures about voluma and these cheekbones and lifting up on the nasal labia fold and full pouty, beautiful lips. And, you know, we, we got carried away and, you know, we've all experienced, you know, fillers. But I feel like that's kind of phasing out. And um, I definitely, now that I'm older, shy away from fillers. I, I think the only filler that I would probably do on myself is Sculptra, um, which is a biostimulatory filler. But that's not to say fillers are, are bad or, you know, I don't, I mean, inject people all day, every day in my office with fillers, but you know, it's, there's other things that you can do besides filler um, to make yourself look your very best at every age. And it's usually a combination of things. Maybe it's a little bit of filler in your lips for lip plumping. And maybe it's a little bit of filler in the temples for, you know, a sunken kind of temporal area. But then we're doing tightening devices and lasers. And it's just kind of like the whole picture. It's like when you go to the gym and work out, you don't just do the free weights. You do the free weights, you do the machines, you do cardio, you work out with a trainer, you have resistance bands, you eat clean. So it's just like the whole package and the whole picture. Um, because becomes really, really important. So, um, but I think the take home message is now that I'm older, I'm relying less on fillers and more on energy based devices and lasers and maybe even surgery in the near future. But I don't think I'm quite there yet, but I will take you guys on that journey with me. So I hope this helps you guys and just wanted to kind of give you a, you know, a summary of the lasers that I do because a lot of you guys ask me that in person and in the YouTube comments and on my Instagram and I don't want to keep, keep from you guys. I just want to share everything that I do and that I recommend for my patients. But each individual is different. So if someone comes in and they have brown spots and dark circles under the eyes and it's going to be a Pico and a V-beam. If they come in and they're fair skin but they have a lot of sun damage and brown spots, there's probably going to be a fraxel and a CO2 and a thermage. So it just depends and we can combine all these treatments safely and effectively um, to make you have the best skin of your life at every age. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Love you and thank you so much for watching.